Tim and Gar back with Rescue Methods and in these next couple segments what we're going to kind of review is some some different cuts and cutting methods for for roof operations. When it when I think about uh, tr truck work on the roof <clears throat> there's a lot of different applications and a lot of different cut methods so what we're really trying to do here is just demonstrate some of the things that that we think about when we're thinking about different types of roof construction. What we have here is a single story ranch <clears throat> in a, uh, that's got a hip style roof. This would be the final cut stage after we've cut and, and pulled the, the louvers up of, a, of the end hip cut. Uh, Gar, I like this cut for this type of application and uh, it seems real useful for, to me, to me for, for smoke that is caught or, or ventilation that we need in an end bedroom unit where we don't want to make a, a regular square hole. Absolutely, and if you look at the way this roof is constructed, it's going to give you a pretty safe platform to operate on. Uh -huh. This hip area is going to be one of the strongest portions of the roof. If you break the roof down and how these things are put together, this is an older style construction. Uh, we're using rafters as opposed to trusses, sure. and we're using plank boards as opposed to OSB sheeting. So it's really going to give you some good work time and a good stable platform. And if you break down some of the pieces and the parts, this of course is going to be your ridge beam, your ridge pole. This is called a king rafter, and those are called jack rafters. Now, when you, do, when you go to make this cut, especially on the hip end, it is imperative that you do not cut through the king or the jack rafters, because that's the whole strength of the roof system. If you were to cut through this, uh, this king rafter here, this whole ridge pole could drop down. So you sure. could lose the entire integrity of the roof. So you do have to be careful with your saw to make sure you're riding up over uh, those rafters as opposed to cutting down through them. Uh, as long as they are intact, you're gonna have a lot of work time on this roof. And like you said before, it really gets a good ventilation in an area that, you know, these are the back bedrooms of this home. We got a fire in here, we need some ventilation. This is the area that I was gonna, I'm gonna come to because everything naturally funnels up to this location right here. So mm -hmm. you're gonna draw a lot of heat and a lot of fire right in this location. And I think having the added benefit of, of the construction type, the nice strong where we've got four or five members coming together to help uh, increase our carrying capacity while we're working on the roof, it make, in my mind it makes it for a, safe, a little bit safer operation because the, it is a little bit more time consuming. Yeah, I mean, and you know, just talking about ventilation in general, you still need to watch your wind direction when you do something like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. You got a strong west wind coming out here, you open this up, you know, it could spread it throughout the attic. So sure. keep in mind your wind direction and uh, you know what you're doing with your ventilation practices. I think as a, as a trucker, it's always a good idea to, you know, when you're driving to the scene, take a look at those flags, take a look at the trees. And even when you get on the roof, you know, take a look around and, and try to catch a wind direction to make sure that we're putting our hole on, on the leeward side in the right place at the right time. Looking at the, construction of this particular house you know we're looking at a 50 60 area era conventionally built stick built house with with uh, true 2 by 8 2 by 10 rafter construction you know the hip cut or or this style cut is not necessarily applicable in every single uh, 
construction type where you you know you might have this hip looking style section of a roof uh, it's a good cut but you have to be mindful about the different construction types wouldn't you agree yeah absolutely especially in your modern construction i mean they do make hip trusses mm -hmm. uh, so just because a roof looks in this fashion uh, and it all goes back to knowing your district knowing when your houses are built knowing when your neighborhoods were put in uh, we know this house has been here since I've been on the department. I've been on 17 odd years, um, and it's been here long before that. So that, you know, we know this is a 1950s, 1960s era construction. Chances are it's going to be conventionally built, stick built with your with your rafters and your plank boards, or maybe true plywood as opposed to OSB. Uh, so you're going to have some work time uh, on a roof of this uh, of nature. Uh, now your modern construction can do a hip roof. Like I said, they're going to build them with trusses. And one more thing you might want to be aware of or keep in the back of your mind, if it had a higher pitch, uh, some of these will have usable attic space. They'll be actually used as a room, um, as a storage area, whatever. They could wall this section off with a knee wall, and you might think you're getting ventilation for the whole attic space, and all you're actually going to vent is this hip section. Mm -hmm. So that's just another thing to keep in the back of your mind. Um, if this is used for a storage area or a living space, this could be walled off, so you might not be getting the ventilation that you think you're getting if they have that knee wall intact. And I, I think that's a good point to bring up. Those, those knee walls can be problematic for, for us in a lot of different scenarios. So I think that w one of the troubleshooting mechanisms that you can utilize is once you make this initial hip cut, if you're not getting, if, if you're not getting the relief for the cruise inside that you think you should be getting, then maybe you need to think about moving down the roof. Maybe there is a knee wall section and maybe we need to move down closer to the, to the edge of the roof line and, and make another cut and in order to ventilate that knee wall section. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it all comes down to sizing up your roof, like we've talked about before. What you see behind us are hat vents. Those are some of the greatest indicators you're gonna get for if your ventilation is working or where you should ventilate. If we're ventilating this section, and we believe that we wanna ventilate the whole attic and we're ventilating this section, and we do not have smoke coming out of those hat vents, chances are there is a knee wall in here. Hmm. We're gonna ventilate this section and we don't even have smoke in the main attic space. So that's another clue that you can use. Those hat vents are going to tell you where the smoke is in the attic area and where you should vent. And, and for those of us who, who may not be familiar with construction, we would, we would typically see those hat vents obviously closer to the ridge line or what you might see is, is maybe a ridge vent. We would be looking for some type of an indicator that we have smoke moving in the main area of the attic by looking at the ridge vent and seeing what what kind of pressure, what kind of uh, volume of smoke we have moving out of it. Absolutely. The hat vents are one of the greatest things we can use as a ladder cover. You make the roof, knock those hat vents off. You can stick your camera in there, you turn the camera to the roof, you can see if you've got heat in the attic space, and you're going to see the volume of smoke and where the volume of smoke is greater. Once again, it's going to give you a good indication on where you need to cut your hole. I think the, the camera, if you have the manpower and the availability, having the camera on the roof is always, a, it's, and the extra camera, obviously, it's a, it's a great tool to help kind of locate and, and utilize one more tool in the toolbox to Absolutely. make your... Absolutely. And you know, with today's modern fires, if you're going to cut that vent hole, cutting it in the right spot is imperative. If you cut it in the wrong spot, you can make your job a little bit tougher. I agree.